Well, hello, hello. Are you one who is into solo travel? So this is what we're going to talk about in our session today. from Croatia. My name is Victoria Rose and I am known as the Queen of Livestream. Now listen here, that is not being pretentious. I've actually been live streaming for almost as long as it's been around, which is not that long. Facebook started dishing out the capability to live stream in December 2015 and not everyone got the ability to actually live stream then. So today I want to talk about solo travel and what are your thoughts around the good, the bad and the ugly of solo travel. I have three things to share with you why I think solo travel is absolutely amazing. But here's the thing, I want your comments. I want what stops you from going solo and traveling, or you are the kind of gutsy gal that doesn't need a companion when you travel. And it's okay if you do, there's no shaming on my show. Uh, but what is it about what you do? Oh, thank you for those hearts. Look, this is not my big heart like I used to have. It is that tiny little heart, but it is the only one that I can take with me in my absolutely packed to the rim backpack and trolley bag because the other thing is if you had a companion then perhaps they wouldn't take as much as you did so you can fit your big heart into their bag so hello who's joined Ah, oh, hello Maria how kind of you to join today thank you so much now now listen guys, here's the thing. I wanted to do my very first on location in Opatio, Croatia live stream out in the open. But here's what I've discovered. Now I'm an Aussie. I have lived over seven years abroad uh, during my entire life. And, uh, but mostly in Australia. So that's over six decades living in Australia. And I don't wear these. <laughs> I actually was wearing these the other day and my daughter said, Mum, I've never seen you in sunglasses. And she's right. But here's the weird thing here. Are, so Australia is supposed to be one of the worst countries for cancer, for sunlight, for whatever, and yet it's here in Croatia. I'm so glad that somehow I ended up with a pair of sunglasses because I need them outside in this weather. So what is it about solo travel that is so amazing? Oh, look, here's Leonie Waterhouse. Hi, Victoria. Oh, let me pop you up on the screen, Leonie. Oh, this is so sweet. I am gutsy, but do want to share experiences. Also, it's so expensive to have a room on your own. Oh, you're so right there. So right there. Um, in the style I want at 
the moment, I'm guessing MT stands for. Well, Leone, you have brought up some really, really great reasons why it is good to have a companion. And listen, it is absolutely true that sharing the experience with someone else is really good. I remember when I turned 50 and I took myself off on my seven week backpacking trip solo around Italy and the Greek islands, here I was in Santorini, having a look at the stunning sunset on my own. <laughs> One of the rare times when I felt <laughs> because yes, I did not have anyone to share that experience with. Oh, Leone is saying I didn't finish my sentence. Well, why not, Leone? <laughs> so Leone's brought up some really, really great points. So they're the really sort of bad things, I guess you could say, about going solo. Yes, you have to pay for that room that two people would pay for. So you can't split the cost. And of course, Leone does like um, something a little bit luxurious. Now, I'm not saying that I don't want the luxury as well, but here's where the difference is with me. I want to see stuff. And if I have to give up a luxury room or even a really comfortable room, I'm not saying Leone has to always have luxury, but there's nothing wrong with that if you do. So I like, I'd rather spend an amount of money <clears throat> on a lower quality accommodation and uh, even share. Although sharing, I've noticed on this trip, I'm disinclined to share. <laughs> I, uh, I would rather pay that little bit of extra and have my own space. So that can be, I guess, the bad about, uh, about going solo. Hello, awesome lady. I love the butterflies in the back. Ah, oh, yes, I know. See, this is the thing about being in a different location. You are certainly challenged. Everything is different. All of a sudden, here I am in EU, and all of a sudden, I have all of these things that I cannot do, that I could do in Australia. There are all these rules and regulations that are just fluttering around. <laughs> Thank you for your comment, Maria. Yes, I, I am very lucky to be in this accommodation that I'm in. And during one of my live streams, I will actually show this accommodation to you. It's costing me 400 euros for the month, which is, oh gee, the dollar's not doing that good. But when I paid that money, it was costing me around $631 to stay here for the entire month. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a gutsy gal, Leone. I was almost going to say this. I can't share because I snore, lol. Although it doesn't bother me, but I am caring about my roommate. Well, I'm going to have to put my hand up for that as well, Leone, because I absolutely do snore. How do I know? Because I wake myself up sometimes. But here's the thing. My roommate can't snore. It's okay for me, but they can't. And listen, I don't feel too bad about that because uh, when I was um, late 40s, I did a backpacking trip down through Tasmania. And on one celebrated occasion, there I was sharing a room with 11 other women of all ages. They were very young ones and others that were old women. The snoring in that room. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was reaching for the earplugs and one woman couldn't stand it so much that she actually had to drag her mattress out of the room so she could sleep. So it's, um, hello, Michelle. Oh, thank you. Loving my hair. Do you know, Michelle, this is one of the amazing things that uh, it's interesting. See, so solo travel, I'm, I'm, as I'm discussing these things, I do want to talk about the ugly bit. We've spoken one thing about the bad bit. But solo travel, 
Oh, one of the really good things about solo travel is the flexibility. I am a bit of a control freak. I know no one's noticed that to date, but I certainly am a bit of a control freak. And I'm, I also have this spontaneity thing going. So I can be somewhere, like for instance, Tramutola. I was there for almost two weeks, which was probably about three days too long, but I was paid up and everything was organized. So I stayed there and I decided to have the attitude that I would enjoy the last those last three days in a different way. When I caught the bus up to Naples, because I don't have a car, I haven't hired a car here, there's no way I'm traveling, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road, I can tell you. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, when I was in Naples, if you've been following my journey, and by the way, all you have to do to get every single thing around my journey is to search in the Facebook search bar, hashtag travel with Victoria Rose and or just click on that hashtag in this post and every single thing to do with my journey will be laid out for you on a special filtered results page. That's why hashtags are so good. But when I was in Naples, how was I to know that it was a Monday? Headdresses except for one did not open on a Monday. And how lucky was I? Because as Michelle is just saying there, loving your hair, Miss Sassy. Do you know it's amazing? We're, we're incredible. My single post on my hair and, <laughs> and how I felt about it has had way more comments and way more interaction than any other single post that I've done. And I get that. You know why? Because hair is important. As I stated, when I moved over to Melbourne almost two decades ago, the first service I had to get was a good hairdresser and I found him. It was really great. So thank you for that. So that's one of the really good things about solo travel is the fact that you have the flexibility. You can decide, you know, I've been here long enough. I need to move on. I like the idea of deciding in the moment whether I want to go walking along the promenade, whether I want to go down and have a swim. By the way, I had my first swim yesterday. Oh, golly gosh. <laughs> so from Melbourne, and there have been times when I have swam in Port Phillip Bay, and it's the that sort of experience where you just sort of pop down, pop up again as a gasp, a gasp, catching your breath because it's that cold. Well, you would think that the Adriatic Sea, especially as this is at the end of summer, their summer here ends on the, so I've been told the 26th of September, so luckily I've got a few more weeks to go. Have you noticed how I'm wearing a summery dress? <laughs> and it was so cold. Oh my gosh, but I like the flexibility. Here's the other really point number two about solo travel. The point is that you have to be aware. You have to observe stuff. So when you're with a companion or a group of people, often you, yes, you're sharing the experience. What that normally means is that you're talking, chit-chatting to each other and engrossed in their response and taking photos of each other. I have to ask people to take a photo of me if I need a photo. I have to step out and bravely handle talking to not only strangers, but strangers who don't talk English. I mean, how rude is that? In Italy, it wasn't that hard because I do have a smattering of Italian, even though no Italians I spoke to, as I've already said, recognized it as Italian. <laughs> but in Croatia, oh, the Croatian language is another kettle of fish. It's a very different a way to pronounce words and I'm struggling with it but this is where 
Google Translate comes in handy. So that's a good thing. That's the second really good thing about solo traveling is you have to be present because if you're not present, well, you, you can't not be present when you're solo traveling. I mean, you could be sitting somewhere and having your cup of coffee and, and reading your book. Yes, in those moments, you're in the book. But when you're sitting on your own or walking along on your own, you are present because you're not looking at your mobile phone, are you? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, Michelle. I'm not sure this is quite true, Michelle. I've had a, a bit of a, a laugh with some of the people here. Oh, oh, crikey. <laughs> No, I'm not going to read that out because I'm, I don't think that's quite true. But it's very sweet of you, Michelle, to actually say that. It's an interesting thing is that I've just said to the people that have rented this place out to me that generally the Croatians that I've connected with seem to be sort of grumpy. They don't smile a lot and they're going to explain to me why tomorrow. Look, I do understand we've got history to deal with here. We all have our stories. We've all got the generation all stories that are passed down. We, all of us, even those of us who live in Australia and actually have it good, <laughs> we still complain, don't we? I mean, Italians, one of the biggest gripes uh, from Italians about Italians is that they complain. I said, well, that's no different to Australia. We're like that as well. So what is the third thing about solo travel that I think is so important? Yeah. The third thing is that you don't have the distractions of the other person or people. You can't blame them when things don't go as planned. <laughs> you have to look at self. You have to look at, well, that was stupid. And that causes you to reflect and to decide, okay, do I want that to happen again? If I don't, what is it that I need to change? So I see solo traveling as an incredible, incredible opportunity to really, as uh, my friend Christine Burns posted today, to be, that's capital B and capital E, to be. Now, here's the thing. One of the most common complaints about solo travel is that is the loneliness. So I ask you, have you ever been with your friends and felt lonely? Hey, Mary Ann, how are you? Thank you for joining my broadcast. Have you ever been with your friends and felt lonely? Have you ever walked into a room full of people and felt lonely? Have you ever, and I've done this, I have been in a marriage and felt lonely. So loneliness, being lonely is an interesting state and many, and it's one of the biggest problems that we have, according to many reports on our planet today, even with all of the connections that we have with social media and all of those things, loneliness is a big problem for people. They feel isolated. They don't feel they belong. Well, come to Croatia where you don't belong. <laughs> oh dear, I've learned how to say thank you in Croatian. Havala. There you go. One word. <laughs> By the way, here's a great tip. I've got lots of tips which I will be sharing as my journey goes on. But here is a great tip. If you're ever thinking of traveling, you absolutely have to. <laughs> I thought Havala was good. I know I'm not saying it quite right. Uh, if you absolutely have to know about a foreign language, then get Google Translate. It's free. Do you know you even have the ability to take a photo of a sign 
and Google then will translate that uh, photo into English. So you know what stuff means. It's really, really important for you guys to do that. What's the ugly bit? <laughs> I'm, I've actually, uh, well, I will share it. It was a bit silly of me. Uh, one of the problems that you will have, whether you're a solo traveler or with a companion or a group, is the cost to uh, exchange your money. Uh, absolutely, the cost. So I thought I was clever. I thought, you know what? I'm going to get my Qantas cash card and I'll start using that. So what happened was, here I am the day of landing in Rome. So that's the big trip from Melbourne to Bangkok, a two and a half hour layover, and then landing in Rome. And so that day, I foolishly went to draw some money out. One of the things about travel is how things are different. <laughs> and this is why it got ugly. I know my PIN code. I know it. I've used it a number of times, sadly. So here I am, this ATM, this uh, European ATM, pop my uh, Qantas cash card in and typed in my PIN code. I know what my PIN code is, but apparently there's a combination. I'd just seen this amazing drop dead gorgeous blue-eyed and tall Italian man. So, oh, I am alive. <laughs> He's rather scrummy. That's a word I saw on a post today and I thought I like that word, scrummy. Anyway, I did think another word, but we won't go there. And also jet lag. And here I am putting my cash card in the machine and I put in the wrong pin. And this is how that's handled or was handled on this machine. So I'm in a, at Rome, Termini, so very, very busy central railway station in Rome and bus station. All of a sudden, this siren sounds. Do do do. Oh, what's going on? And at the same time, the screen starts flashing in different colors. You have entered the wrong pin, a different color. You have entered the wrong pin. I felt like a criminal. I thought, is this candy camera? What the hell's going on? And by the time I gathered my senses, if that was even possible in that moment, the ATM said, we are taking your card due to security. And they ripped my card and I couldn't get it back. So it's like, oh, that's the ugly bit, guys. If I had have left it a day, had a good night's sleep, did not have visions of tall, blue-eyed Italian men in my mind. Oh, man, not men, man. And so that was the ugly bit. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do now? So what am I doing now? Well, I'm, I'm having difficulty getting in contact with uh, Qantas Cash. This is where Facebook is good. They answer on Facebook. And then I have to go and get a whole new Qantas Frequent Flyer card because once the machine takes it in, it's finished. And I'm now using my credit card, which costs a fortune. But that's one of the joys of traveling. So there, there are my tips, my three reasons why I believe solo travel is good. You know, I like taking photos. Have you picked that up? It would be really, really annoying <laughs> for someone who's actually um, with me. So Michelle's asked a really great question. Are you booking your accommodation? ahead of your destination or are you winging it so to speak well the truth is there's a story behind how the universe tricked me but that's a previous live stream this accommodation i did book and october nothing's booked i'm looking at some house sit opportunities 
One is in Bosnia, which is rather intriguing because that's where the Bosni Bosnian pyramids are and I wouldn't mind seeing those. And I'm also looking at workaway.com, which is an amazing website where you can actually go and be with the people, the people that live there. So uh, to answer your question, no, I'm not booking my accommodation ahead of time, not for October anyway. And I do intend to be here for October, though you never know what will happen. Here's the thing about my experiences so far. Tramutola was amazing for living the culture of the Italians in that region. And they truly accepted me. <laughs> yes, sounds exciting and scary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Isn't that a face that you do, an emoji, sort of the scary face? So in Tramatola, they they certainly accepted me. I got so used to saying buongiorno, buonasera, and I could say Com come va, how are you? And I was really building up uh, to 10 words. And uh, But they laughed at me. I was there just for their uh, amusement. And I ended up making a few really, really great connections, which I will always treasure. What's the difference in Opatia, Croatia? I did not realize that Opatia was Europe's oldest tourist destination. This is not <laughs> Croatian culture. It is well and truly an upmarket, totally amazing, totally beautiful area. So I'm going to enjoy that because I'm flexible and I'm resilient and I'm curious. After this, though, I would like to go back to living the life, not totally because that's not possible, but to getting a glimpse into the culture of the country. So where am I going? I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Nella. How are you? Thank you for joining me today. Well, that's it, team. Uh, I've gone for way longer. Oh, hi, Nella. So sweet. Hi, gorgeous. Right back at ya. So the world needs more heart. Why am I doing this? My name is Victoria Rose, the queen of live stream. Don't forget that, right? I have to go and get myself a tiara. Uh, and my message to you is, oh, here's a heart right back at you. <laughs> my message to you is, Step out, live that dream. When I was uh, in Melbourne, <clears throat> due to one of my leadership training business workshops, the guy there, I asked one of the managers, so how are you today? And he said, living the dream. We knew he didn't actually mean living the dream. I realized though that I needed to start saying that I'm living the dream. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nella. Very sweet. Let me just pop you up here as well. Yep. So my message to you is what is your dream? Do you even know what your dream is? What is it that you want? If you've got that hole in your heart, that hole in your very being, don't go to your grave like that you deserve to live life. You are the one who gets to choose what is the life that you want to live. And if you settled and you're happy, you go for it. You have every right to live your life your way as long as you're not harming others and actually not harming yourself. Victoria Rose signing off from Opetia. Croatia. I'll be back. I don't know when, but I will certainly update you. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Look at all those hearts. I'm such a lucky girl. Yes, live full out your dream, desires and destiny. That is such a good message, Nella. And, you know, I, so how come I'm here? I'll, final word as I'm parting. I have some friends 
more than one. And those guys are over here. Oh, thank you. Ooh, ooh, all the hearts. Thank you. Those guys were over here before I traveled over and they were here. As a matter of fact, in this very same accommodation that I'm in, that's how come I got that contact details. And I saw the photos they posted and I said, I'm going there. I'm going there. I didn't know how I was going to do that. It was a bit of a trip coming up from Tramitola, I must say, but I did it. <laughs> and you can too. But only if you want to. The first thing you have to do is get clear on what it is you want to do. Subscribe to my live streams. Click the hashtag go live with Victoria. I will be posting some stunning photos later just for you.